has no boundaries. Everyone treasures their own cuisines, but for newcomers, food takes on other meanings. They diligently preserve their cuisine to give a taste of home to their new American home, instill the love of their home country to their children, and lastly, proudly represent their culture in our America the Beautiful. Spice and Recipe does all the above by introducing recipes from different countries enriched with human stories and comparison of tradition. Hi, I'm Mike DiGiacomo, a born and raised American and a food lover, and I invite you to join me as we discover the origins of flavor, the journey of spices, and the recipes of the world. Well, today we're gonna to talk about fennel. And fennel, it's cool because it comes from the word marathon. It's derived from that. And there's a lot of interesting facts about this. So we're gonna have you learn a little bit about fennel and then we'll come back with our guest in the studio. Fennel is an herb in the carrot family and all its parts are aromatic and edible. The bulb is used for cooking, chopped since its flavor is very intense. It's used in salads, rice, and pasta. And it goes particularly well with fish. Shoots can be blanched and eaten as vegetables. The leaves, similar to dill leaves, can be used as garnish and seeds as seasoning or tea. In India, cuisine seeds are as well coated with sugar and used to refresh the breath after meals. One of the oldest medicinal herbs in the world, its use dates back 3,000 years BC. The plant is native to Mediterranean countries. In fact, the word marathon, the long running race named after a city in Greece, means fennel field in Greek. A perennial plant, fennel grows in sunny locations and is harvested in late September. The herb is known for curing coughs, stomach bloating, and in some cultures it's believed to have magical powers. On St. John the Baptist Eve, on June 23rd, people would stack fennel in the keyhole of their front door to keep the evil away for one year. In the U.S., St. John's celebrations are part of the Louisiana voodoo practice, and many New Orleans residents still observe the tradition. Fennel can be used as fresh or dried. Be prepared to pay around $3 per pound for fresh fennel, or around $5 for one ounce of fennel powder or seeds. Well, as you may have guessed from my last name, DiGiacomo, it's got a little Italian flair, so we thought it to pay tribute to my heritage, we'd start off with an Italian chef, a guest from a part of Italy that I'm from. Uh, his name is Leo Fascinella. Leo's here. Good to see you, buddy. How good are morning. you? Hi, good to see you. Hey, we, good. good. I'm doing great. Good to see you. Uh, we've talked many years. I don't yes. feel. I think we've known each other many years. I don't think we've really shared your story. I haven't heard your story. I know you're from a part of Sicily that um, my family's from. My family's from Carlantini, Sicily, and you're from an, an area am, near there. Mm -hmm. I'm from uh, San Cataldo. It's a small town in the middle of the island. And then uh, uh, it's kind of funny that I decided to make this dish today, which uh, represents our, uh, our culture and our, uh, the island. And uh, me being like from in the middle of the island, we do have a lot of fennel. It yeah. grows wild all over the places, and that's why we, we use a lot of that herbal for dishes. Yeah, I love fennel too. I mean, so, uh, the fennel yeah. seeds we use in Italian sausage yeah. quite a oh, bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yes. we dive into this, I know uh -huh. you got some great ingredients sure. here, but I want to talk a little bit about how you got to the United States because uh, the culture <laughs> part of it is always interesting. So uh -huh. how did you come over to, uh, specifically okay. Omaha? So when I was 16 years old, uh, I had some relatives that lived in Omaha, Nebraska from Carlentini actually. Uh -huh. They came on vacation. I had just gotten out of school, and uh, my uncle goes, so what are you going to do with your life? I go, I don't know. <laughs> you have to, you have to talk, huh? <laughs> right? He goes, why don't you come to America and then, you know, start, start a new life out there, if it's okay with you. You know, back in the 70s, uh, Sicily, there was no work out there. It was pretty hard, uh, hard mm -hmm. life. We had nothing. I just got out of school. We lived in a little house with uh, barely uh, just a stove and a couple beds, you know. So, so I came to America. I came in... Uh, I lived down on the, on Seventh Street, mm -hmm. Street, Seventh and Pacific. Down in Little yeah, Italy, yeah. Down in Little Italy, and I, uh, so I started uh, working for my uncle as a shoe shine guy. He had a barber shop, uh, so I worked there. Then I got a job as a dishwasher at a mm -hmm. restaurant, the yeah. Golden Apple, 
And uh, as of today, I'm still washing dishes, but in my own restaurant. So. <laughs> that's the thing. When you have your own restaurant, you got to do all, you can jack of yeah, all trades, so, and you got to wash so, your own dishes. And, I, and I, that's the, the reason why we came to Omaha, dude, because my uncle lived in here. And uh, you know what? Omaha has been a great city for us. It's a yeah. beautiful place to be. It is. And it, there's it, a lot of Italian people. There's also. a lot of Italian. Yeah. And you know, when I have friends come in from the East Coast who are Italian, I didn't realize how many Italians are in yeah. Omaha, but there's, mm -hmm. there's quite a few. They, they say, uh, I think uh, back in the you know 1920s, mm -hmm. 5,000 immigrants mm -hmm. came to Omaha came, from yeah. Italy. Yeah. So and it has just a, continued. There's a big uh, Sicilian influence uh, in uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. So yes. they all done well. It's uh, kind of nice. And, and you know, Omaha's no Italians from food, right? Um, <laughs> so how did how did the flavors of Sicily um, were mm -hmm. how were they incorporated into Omaha? How are those flavors and those recipes? translated over here and okay. how big of an influence was that's that? That's an interesting question that you asked me that because uh, until I came here to, uh, to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, really we did not do a whole lot of like uh, uh, calzone, you know that double mm -hmm. crusted sure. pizza yeah. in, my, yeah. in my area, we didn't do that and a lot of dishes with uh, like peppers, you know the people from Carlentini on the eastern coast they use a lot of peppers, yeah. a lot of spicy foods, the sausage and all that so yeah. And it was kind of interesting for me because like in Sicily, every, every little each re region changes. They yeah. all got their own, pretty much almost their own different culture, their own food. And it language. relates back to the mainland Italy too. It's very yes. different. Uh -huh. Northern Italy food uh -huh. is very different from yes, Sicilian it's, food it's, and Southern Italy. Exactly. Yeah. The, Sicilian, the Southern food is a lot more, uh, more uh, tomatoey, more spicy, yeah. spicy. And the Northern is a lot more, a little lighter, more cream. Mm -hmm. and, in that type of they don't do like it as that. well in Northern Italy. I mean, Sicilians <laughs> do it right. What are we making today? You got some, you got some great okay, ingredients so, here. What are we making? So, yeah, it, that, that's been going on for a long time. Yeah, right? exactly. Sicilians and Northern, Sicilian, you know what's know. going on. Yeah. But anyway, it's all good. We all love each we other. We do. Everybody you know why? Do. Because we love to sing. Yeah. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get to the recipe. All right, so what we're going to do today, now we're going to make pasta con sarde, which this represents Sicily so much. Any places, any restaurant you go to, they will have this dish. Because why? We have a lot of fennel growing everywhere. And it's cheap, and it's, it's uh, not that expensive. You can just go and pick it. So I remember Well, if time, you grow it, you grow the fennel, right? Yes, and you I have grow, a garden. Yeah, I have a yeah. garden. I grow all my own vegetables and everything. But... Uh, I don't know if we have time for this, but one time, I was, time. I was in the hills, at yeah. Hollywood Hills, in a big, big limousine with some people with, uh, you know, like friends. We're driving around, I say, stop the car, why? Those fennel plants on the side, hey, on the side of the road. Them? You spot them? I spot them, them like a Sicilian <laughs> yeah. spot. So we we like spot everything. Hawk, yeah, spot that fennel, pull so over. we stopped, picked, and I, he goes, what are you doing? I go, stop them in. I picked it, put it in a box, and I shipped it to my mom. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Omaha, Nebraska. That's the way to do it. That's a, that's a true Italian chef right there. <laughs> you know, you yeah. that? Anyway. So now here it is right here. You're still cooking with fennel. <laughs> so we got some fennel in here. And uh, what are we going to do with this? I'm Before we do anything else, we're going to Chop it a little bit. I'm going to uh, blanch this fennel. The aroma. Th that's the thing. Can I've you smell it, Mike? Fennel. It's so beautiful. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Got that, uh, anise, oh uh, my God! Scent, Look right? at. I'm going to blanch this, and I'm going to. Uh, this is part of the dish. I'm going to blanch. Is yeah, I'm going to blanch it, and then uh, we're going to cook the pasta in the in that water there where uh, where we blanching this fennel. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like that. Dude, has, have, have you adapted, have you changed this recipe at all through the years? Is yes. It been, what have you, you done know, differently? The, the, the cuisine, very innovative. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of different, back in the days, for example, you know, like the tomatoes were not as sweet as they are today. Well, yeah. acidy, so the Italians you know, they used to put a lot of sugar in their sauces. Yeah. Today, you don't need to do that. Sure. And you know, it just changes. Uh, uh, people change. We all change yeah. language and everything. So you got to do things uh, uh, more, so people like it more. Or you know, it's like uh, when you make a sauce. Back yeah. in the days, you cooked it for days and days. Can, Why? Right. Because the meats and the th were much more tougher than yeah. they are today. Today, they're a little bit, they're a little bit different, more tender. You know. So. I mean, I'd hear stories where my nana would keep her sauce on the stove for. See, 10 hours, exactly. Right? I don't you do don't that. need to do that no, anymore. No, I do in 10 minutes, I make a marinara yeah. sauce. Yeah. Marinara, yeah, marinara. marinara. <laughs> All right, so a little salt in here, right there. Oops. Just a pinch. I want to make a mess in here. That's fine. <laughs> make That's me fine. clean it. I don't care. Right? All right, just a pinch, a little salt in there. So, okay, so how long do you let that simmer in there? 
No, are we going to boil it? So as soon as everything okay. boiled, yeah, I'm going to boil it. So you get the flavors out of it. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as everything is done, uh, I'm going to make the sauce right now, though. Uh, so a little bit of olive oil, onions. I don't think I've ever made an Italian dish without olive oil and onions oh, you have and to garlic. Use it. Onions, garlic, and there's right no here. better fragrance than that smell. Onions, that garlic. I'm going to cook it up. It smells really good. How long a little do you bit of anchovies. Uh, and I have sardines, okay, so these are the kind of sardines I've been using today, sardines right there, and these are my anchovies. So you need to cook everything together in here. Yeah. How long do you cook uh, garlic? You don't, you don't want it to get burnt, no, do you? No, exactly, until they're yellow, yellowish yeah. color. Do not burn garlic, that's the, that's the worst thing you can do. So in the meanwhile, this is already blanched. We're going to put the fennel in here. And as you can see, I also add a little bit of water from it. That's going to make our sauce, okay? Look at that. This is beautiful. And the it smell. Just, I wish people could smell it because <laughs> it's, it's, just, uh, it's just, uh, and all the flavors in here are just unbelievable. Well, you can really this smell This is a it. really Sicilian dish, guys. You're not going to find this in Milano, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all You'll right. find it in Omaha, though. You might find some good, nice clothes in Milano, some nice leather shoes, <laughs> but not this dish. Only in Omaha, Nebraska. What, 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 so, was so that pine, pine nuts? nuts. Pine I put nuts. some pine nuts, also some uh, raisin. Look at that. Raisin, pine nuts, raisin. Crushed red pepper right there. Add a little bit of marinara sauce. You know what I mean? The, can I have some it's marinara? Not, it's not marinara. Mary. I don't know what that Mar is. What is Mary. marinara? Marinara. Marinara. What's going on here, guys? There we go. <laughs> so a little marinara sauce right here. Can you see all the different You're, flavors in here? Can, I mean, you can got. We, can we talk about your marinara? You got the whole island thing here. Can we talk about your marinara? How do you do that? How do you cook the marinara? My marinara sauce is very simple, guys. Onions, garlic, and whole, whole tomatoes. Look at yeah. that. So, yeah, so then pepper. you just cook this down for, what, 20 minutes? Half hour. Half hour? That's all. But you, I use the San Marzano tomatoes, the Italian tomatoes. You got to have the San Marzano. Do you, you get them, to, uh, do you get the DOP from Italy, or do you just use what's here in the United no, States? No, no, I get them from Italy. Yeah. I get them imported. Yeah, this is important. This is the lifeline of my restaurant, my marinara sauce, the, and the, the pasta that yeah, we make, it's of fantastic. Course. But San Marzano so, is yeah, really Yeah, San Marzano is the best. Yes. Anyway, so this sauce is already done. Now what I'm going to, I'm going to do is I'm going to add my uh, bucatini pasta into into the boiling water, and the boiling water has all the flavor from the fennel from the right fennel, in yeah. there. So you're cooking that in with the pasta the and marries those yes, two. Yes, exactly. That's what you do. Anyway, so right there. And uh, the pasta has already been cooked. I don't know. I know we did not have a whole lot of time, so uh, i just uh, get some of these. I love bucatini pasta. Mike, how do you like bucatini pasta? I like they, it. You know, I, uh, I, I do like it, but I do like the thinner pastas like oh, angel, angel hair. Angel hair, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's my best seller. But I figure this, di this dish here, uh, for, uh, for the sauce and all that, I think we, we should have it. Anyway, okay. You that. know, when you were growing up, um, the mothers did most of the cooking, right? So that's really changed over the years. Oh, I'm home, yeah. I'm a home yeah. chef, too. Yes. We, My wife does very little cooking, <laughs> uh, but I do a lot of the cooking. But that's really changed. How, how did that, where, where did you see that transition throughout the years? Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, my dad always, uh, yeah, it's true. He, he does, you know, my dad's job was grilling. He was the best grill master. Uh, well, yeah, you can't, they grill, you can't beat but, a guy's grill, right? But uh, no, uh, I don't know, it's just like, uh, what happened was that uh, back in the earlier years now, everybody works. Yeah. The, the wife, before, the wife never worked. She right. stays home all the time and she did all the cooking. Right. So we've had so to adapt a little bit. Everybody kind of look at them like that's, uh, that's This looks fantastic. Look so this is the done this, dish, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, you know, we're, we're, excuse I'm me, getting sir. ahead of things here. I all right, guys. So, so what do we do? We, on this dish here, you don't put cheese in it. You put no cheese. This is bread. What is that? Is bread crumbs? Bread crumbs sauteed with olive oil. Can we get, let's get them. Bread nice crumbs sauteed with olive oil, put it right on top. Go ahead, go ahead, my friend. Yeah. And so how much do you put on here? Just, just a, a spoonful, just sprinkle it on there. Just like that? There you have it, guys. That's all you need this to do. This is a dish for today, so for all of you. So that's finished, that's complete. It's complete, that's finished right I there. I forgot my fork. No, There's my forks fork. and knives in it. <laughs> Can I ask you one thing? Yes, sir. Um, I'm gonna get a spoon. Um, there are different ways. Oh. 
of mm -hmm. eating pasta. Would you would you show us the correct way of eating pasta? Okay. I've got a spoon. So right for, for this, how, how do you this, for this particular it? dish, this is how I eat it, guys. I think I did a show once on this. Just like that. No spoon or anything. Yeah. That's how I do it. Okay. I know some people like to use a spoon, but that's how I do it. Salud. I don't use a spoon either. <laughs> but some people do. But it, it catches it. It helps catch it. Is it hot? It mm -hmm. looks very hot. I'm going to try it as well. And while I try it, I want to talk to Mike, you. Mike, it's unbelievable, man. How do you incorporate cooking and um, family time? How important is that? And, and do, you get, do you have help in the kitchen, or is it always you in the kitchen by yourself when you're cooking at home? To me, food, family, hand in hand. One way to keep your family together, cook for them once or twice a week. They won't go far. <laughs> and your son is in the studio here. And, and my son, was, I kind of reel them in. I know what they're like. Hey, I made filet today. Oh, they really filet. I love filet. So they, you know. But you know what, Mike? It's so important. Family and food. Is, is, I, I, I just wish that a lot more people did that. Yeah. I do it every week, regardless. Every well, Sunday, I have everybody in my house. We have a beautiful meal. We talk, and that's kind of it's kind of cool. It's good. Yeah, when we were kids, we'd go to my nana's house every Sunday. Every Sunday, and, and you know, we don't do it as much now because, of, you know, with kids and sports, and there's so people are so busy. I think it's yeah. really important you take that time out. To I have think those it's Sunday important, dinners. Mike. I think I think everybody should really do it, man. I keep yeah. on preaching it to everybody. I, sometimes I even go, hey, if you want me. I'll cook for you. Come out, bring you know. Come out, pick up some meatballs, take them home, cook some pasta, and have your kids over. Look at that dish. It looks well, the beautiful. thing I like, <laughs> the, well, the fennel <laughs> provides so much flavor. Oh my God, I love fennel. Fennel, the fennel is one of my really favorite. does provide a lot of flavor. My on favorite there. spice. The breadcrumbs as mm -hmm. well. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's that's a nice dish, and uh, it'd be a lot easier if it was angel hair to roll mm -hmm. it up like that. No, but it's fantastic. When you when you yes. eat meals. Do you eat three meals a day, or do you eat throughout the day? Because in Italy, it's a little bit different. We eat three meals a day. I love tea. I, I mean, yeah. I, and the, right, I love tea. Yeah. If I don't have my meals, like at the time that I like tea, I get mad. Like you get angry. Not screw You're a little hangry. My... <laughs> You're like my wife. She gets hangry no, when she doesn't. So I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. I eat the late dinners, unfortunately, because of my type of work. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, no, I, uh, we eat, uh, I eat a nice big lunch I, I, and a, a lighter dinner. But uh, if I'm not working, if I'm on vacation, I'll have a big dinner and a yeah. lighter lunch. But in America, people go out to eat at 4.30 in the afternoon. In the old country, yeah. they go out to eat at 9.30, 10 o'clock at night for well, dinner, and, and especially the in the summertime. Yeah, the, the food <laughs> seems to taper down in Italy as the day goes on. Is the bigger meal for, during in, in lunch hours? Or? Yeah, usually lunch hours, they have yeah. pasta. Yeah. Pasta and maybe a salad with some uh, a lighter a piece of fish or something. Dinners are a little bit longer and, yeah. and a little bit heavier. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Breakfast though is is very light, isn't it? Breakfast, pretty much coffee and a and a croissant. Mm -hmm. You call it croissant? A croissant. <laughs> croissant. <laughs> croissant. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But Bre like yeah, just maybe some bread, bread or some bread. coffee or yes, something. Yes. Very light. light. Breakfast is not like in the United States. People eat <laughs> ten eggs right. and twelve sausages. No. <laughs> well, eggs, <laughs> brown. No, no, none of that. But because they have the Mediterranean diet is really the diet yeah. over there, and they're yeah. saying if you talk to doctors and stuff, they're pushing a lot of people more toward the Mediterranean diet for health reasons. It's, and yeah. you know, people in the Mediter yeah. Mediterranean areas are doing a really good job and staying thin staying and healthy, thin, staying yeah. healthy, and, and they eat whatever they have around them. It's mm -hmm. kind of natural. They're lucky to, to the climate is good enough that they, there's a lot of things around. They live in an island. There's a lot of fish, a lot of lamb in the mountains. Mm -hmm. so they have everything around. You know? When it comes to food, you know, there's a lot of traditions that, you know, Italians have brought from the old country. Uh, not only food, but what are some of the other traditions that your family has brought from Sicily? To, to uh, Omaha. To, to Omaha, yeah. Uh, well, we brought a mu a food. We brought <laughs> food, <laughs> food uh, music. Yeah. Uh, 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 and, and well, the thing is, everybody has stayed connected. I mean, the family, the connections, it's the, those have been brought from Italy as well. You know, I mean, because yeah. your family's yeah. real tight. Yeah, we are, we are uh, all Italians Italian are really, really, really I mean, it's like, uh, people come to me and go, do you know somebody? That, and we always go, yeah, I know a guy. You know, yeah. if you, if you know need anything, we are yeah. so lucky to, anything we own, you just make a phone call, we help each other out. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. But yeah, don't piss the, the, an Italian guy no, off. No, don't do that. Don't you don't want to do, do that. And, you know, but in Omaha, we have so many, the Italians are real tight here in Omaha. You have the yes. Santa Lucia Festival, mm -hmm. you have the Sons of Italy, 
you have the uh, American Italian Heritage Society, and through all those organizations, all the Italians have been able to stay together. Yes, they have, and they brought in uh, their saints in here. Mm -hmm. Their, well, of course, their culture. Well, the religious and, aspect of it, yeah. yeah the, a lot of religion, a lot of, yeah, a lot of religion. And uh, also the Italians, I know the older people, when they first came here, they, their dream and their goal was to have their kids go to college. Mm -hmm. You know, as you can, I don't know, back in the days, all the, these uh, immigrants' parents they worked so hard to send their kids into to school. Mm -hmm. So back in the 60s and 70s, you had all these doctors that were Italian. Yeah. Doctors, doctors, lawyers. lawyers. Yeah. It's, it was kind of kind of cool. I mean, the, 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 your parent, that's all he wanted for, for his, yeah. uh, the love of the family. We have family, we love our family. It's, yeah. That's important. You know, the, the, yeah. the immigration yeah. process for Italians is, is like so many other immigrants from across the world that come yeah. to the United States. You know, it's tough when you first get started, oh God, yes. but then as you as you continue to um, yes. get ingrained in the culture mm -hmm. and stuff, you you kind of work on that and build it and get jobs and educate the kids and yeah, that's, uh, uh, it, it's just like any other uh -huh. nationality. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They, we all worked together, helped each other out, and we all got along. Mm -hmm. I love. I mean, I I'm that kind of person. I love culture. Yeah. I love to learn other people's culture, other people's language, and listen to them and, and listen to their stories, mm -hmm. which that's part of life, yeah. the beauty of life. It is. It's fantastic. Don't be selfish. Share it with everybody. Share it and share <laughs> the food and share the fennel. What else? As we Before we wrap this up, I want to talk about come back and bring this full circle, bring this back to fennel. What, what else do you, uh, what other pastas do you use with fennel? What other things, like we said, Italian sausage, we use the fennel seeds quite a bit. My, my sugo. You know what sugo is, Zugo, okay, there's yeah. so, yeah. so there's three different kinds of red sauce, marinara, bolognese, and sugo, sugo. sauce. I put fennel on my sugo, you fresh fennel. And I've my never, son, Jay Giuseppe, yeah. he's the one that makes yeah. it. Yeah, put fresh fennel in there. I've never done that. Don't tell anybody else. <laughs> Do you put wine in your sugo? No. No wine? No wine at all. No. It's funny because when you talk about <laughs> you talk about red sauce for Italians, everybody's very protective of their red sauce, and, every, and it's so different depending on who you talk Everybody to. Everybody does Some people it put different. wine. Some mm -hmm. people put, yeah. uh, you know, different different but, ingredients in there. But I respect put, everybody's uh, sure. opinion and yeah. taste. And I'm not saying that I make the best. No, I would never say it's that. It's pretty darn good. No, nah, but we 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 everybody does test it their own way. You know what I mean? So yeah. Sometime maybe we'll do a. a like uh, see who makes the best sauce we'll in have town. A competition here. Competition. We'll have a competition, me Super and you. Mine. Thank you so Thanks much. So this recipe is fantastic. And listen, <laughs> uh, if you'd like a copy of this recipe, you can get that copy of the recipe. I'm, I'm going to read it here, but it's the website is newamericansmedia.com. Uh, while there, just make sure you check out the social media pages as well. There's uh, Facebook and, and the other social media. Uh, and that's a fantastic dish. Leo, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for watching on KPAO TV right here. I'm your host, Mike DiGiacomo, and have a great day, OMA.